The America's Cup World Series went live for the first time from Cascais, Portugal, and the world was introduced to a revolutionary new graphics system. Liveline was pioneered by Stan Honey and became the latest landmark in a journey that began more than 20 years ago for him and his team. We founded a company in 1983 that does the rotating map displays. In 98, I spun that group off, co-founded a company called Sport Vision. Sport Vision pioneered uh, the yellow line, first down line for American football. We developed a K-Zone system that tracks and highlights baseballs. With NASCAR, we track the, the race cars with a very similar system. It sounded kind of great to work with. They've, they've got such a, a big reputation and so much experience that you, you know what they're saying is good stuff. So you just listen, learn and absorb and take it on with you, you know. Stan and Ken are now bringing their expertise to the America's Cup. Our objective is to not only meet the needs of the committed sailing fans who are interested in the technical parts and the sophisticated parts, but also to make sailing um, more accessible to the sports fans who aren't yet sailing fans. The challenges of transferring the tracking technology from land to water via the air have been numerous. We do graphic elements that have been done since 92 in uh, the virtual viewers. What's different is we do them in the live video. And it's the first time that sailors have had a stadium like this. Never before in the America's Cup have we had boundary lines or field of play. Sport vision systems have always worked from tripod mounted cameras, where it's relatively easy to measure the pan and tilt. And you knew where the camera was, you know, in the tripod. Whereas this live line system, it's operating from a helicopter, so it's much, much more difficult to measure the location and the angle of the camera relative to the sporting event. This is all new. New boats, the best crews with the latest technology. We need to know where the boats are, you know, precisely in their attitude in order to, you know, show who's ahead and who's behind and to, you know, highlight them with the flags and information in the video. The team have developed cutting-edge technology to ensure the execution of the live line graphics. In all of our uh, race yachts, we have a, a Pelican case uh, like this, and here we, we have a, an inertial navigation system uh, that is used to track all of the race boats. We're, we're tracking them with very high precision, about an inch accuracy. So we'll load the uh, battery penny first. This supplies um, power not just only to the live line system and the telemetry, but also to all the TV system. So this is the, it's a sector antenna, and that's an amplifier, and that's used to um, send the data to and from the boats. So you think they'll sail out this way? I guess it depends on the wind, huh? So this is the uh, aft post here, or the aft horn, and this houses a GPS antenna here, which allows us to do our uh, two centimeter tracking and then we have the surround sound microphone and camera will eventually be reinstalled here. While the kit is reinstalled on the boats ready for the first race in Plymouth, Stan is also refining the live line system in time for the event. There's very little time between Cascais and this event and you're reluctant to make changes that you can't test. We hope to have a nicer looking boundaries around the course, um, a display of the distance in meters between the boat and the limits. It's never going to stop. It's not, we've, we're not just going to be uh, now in having the systems running, we're going to be constantly developing. It's, the project has grown, it's not just live line as in the TV, we're doing the tracking, the race management, the umpiring. It's, it's such an integral part of the, the race. I hope that we, you know, in doing the system, we end up raising the bar so that um, in other sailing events, people would expect you know, the same you know, level of explanation and graphics and overview. And I think as people get familiar with the approach of inserting the graphics into the live video, I think people will appreciate the fact that they can see the real boats. The live line graphics have already broken new ground. And with two years to go until the final race in San Francisco, the journey has only just begun for this innovative technology. Early morning on Plymouth Hoe. 
The crowds won't descend for another five hours, but Mark Sheffield from the Liveline team is already on site. So this morning we're just loading up all the, uh, the race boat battery pellets. Um, each, uh, each boat has one of these pelican cases and that supplies all the uh, power for the live line system and the onboard TV. So we get very nervous in the morning if the, we worry about the power and the base um, because if this system doesn't charge overnight, um, obviously we, there's, no, there's no instruments on the, on the race boats in the morning. Yesterday um, it was a difficult day. We had uh, the helicopters were up a bit, a bit late due to the weather, and we didn't have as much time as we'd liked. But uh, we had a few glitches in the morning. But by the afternoon, uh, for the speed trial, I think everything was really good. With most of the expensive technical kits stored away overnight, Mark has a long list of equipment to prepare every morning, including a very important antenna. So the aim is to find a location that gives us good view of the sky. Um, allows us to see the helicopter while she's flying um, but not interrupt with our other telemetry. So we were based at the other position yesterday um, but we're going to move over here today and see if we can get a better link to the helicopter. So while the helicopter's up in the sky we just track it using our extremely high-tech tracking system which is a bit of pipe and a couple of crosshairs and we just literally track it around and make sure we've got a good coverage of the sky because without this live line cannot operate, so um, this is a truly key part of the system. The next stop is to rig all the AC-45s down at Mill Bay Docks before the sailing crews arrive. Each boat we allocate, sort of, the initial rig is half an hour, and uh, that allows us to do the, the primary setup, get the batteries in and do our first fact check, and we leave it early enough to make sure we've got enough time if there's any problems Chef, in the Al. morning. Yes, I'll go ahead. So we'll load the batteries, check through the system, do all the data checks, and then we'll put the boat to sleep until she goes out ready for racing. As Mark fits the boats and performs his final checks, thousands of spectators are arriving at Plymouth Hoe, and the Live Line team are standing by at the TV compound, ready for the afternoon's 40-minute fleet race. I think we're down to 10 minutes for the first start today. So uh, people are arriving here. I mean, it's all hotting up. The boats are starting to prepare. Um, we're getting a lot of comms from the race committee about uh, race status and uh, where the boats are and what type of race we're going for. Now we're up on the hoe and what we're doing here is we're actually tracking the data from the helicopter so it can get back in to do the live line rendering on the TV. Well, probably the race is one of the easier times of the day um, in terms of we're just making sure everything that's gone well in the morning uh, is still operational. With unpredictable winds and racing in Plymouth Sound pleasing the watching crowds, the Live Line team have to be ready for anything. Well, we've just had a few capsizes on the water, so it's been a bit hectic. Um, I'm just going to check in on uh, the Live Line graphics suite, and that's where we'll see where all the pictures come in from the helicopter. This is where the hub of Live Line actually takes place on the ground. You can see the. Um We've got the normal straight feed from Heli 3 on one of the monitors here. Then you can see our pure live line feed on the centre monitor. So AT's there, he's on the controls. He's determining what effects we bring up at each stage. He's determining where the flags are and what data he shows. And then, yeah, Rob is running the map to make sure our, our graphics don't just draw over the front of the boat, but they uh, render into the sea and produce the beautiful effects that you can see on the monitor. Stan's monitoring the race officer boat, the uh, mark boat, the umpire boat, and the marshal boat, and as well as the nine race yachts. So we've got all the feeds coming into here, where it will be distributed uh, to the graphics and the live line guys. We survived? I uh, just. It's been pretty hairy. Artemis leading at the gate from Energy, Oracle Racing Spittle, a left, Emirates Team New Zealand and Team Korea. No more than 30 seconds between those first six boats, and it looks now as though Oracle are starting to inch ahead of Artemis.